Do you feel like siphoning all the gas from every car, van, truck, and gas station in your neighborhood and setting your math textbook on fire? Wonderful. We can help you avoid 25 to life in prison by watching this video by Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about graphing the intersections and unions of linear inequalities. Yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. What you should know is this. When you see the word and in between two linear inequalities, they're asking you for the intersection. They want to know what are the solutions that these two inequalities have in common. So that's what you're looking for, the overlapping solution between these two inequalities that you'll be dealing with in an intersection. When you have an or between two linear inequalities, they're asking you for the union. They want to know the combined solution, the sum, a combination of all of the solutions. So, for an example, we have an intersection right here. And I know I have an intersection because I have the word and between two linear inequalities. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, I have x is greater than zero and y is less than or equal to zero. And we're going to graph these two inequalities on our Cartesian plane right here. And you should definitely keep in mind that when you have a less than or a greater than symbol, you're going to use a dashed line to represent that inequality on your graph. And when you have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to symbol, then you can use a solid line as you would with an equation. Yeah, that, that's what you'll do. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you that the graph of x is greater than zero. It will be a dashed line going through the y-axis. Mm -hmm. See, the format of x equals to a number is a vertical line. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to have my vertical line going right here, down the middle. All right, arrows on both ends. And because this is an inequality, I'll need to shade where my solutions can be found, where solutions that are greater than zero can be found on the graph. So I'm going to lightly shade here, all right, this area because the area to the right of this line is where I can shade to find my solutions that are greater than zero. But I need to keep in mind that this is an intersection. So my final answer will be an overlap of the solutions from x is greater than zero and my solutions from y is less than or equal to three. So speaking of y is less than or equal to three, what type of line is that? Exactly. You're so smart. Anytime you have the format of y equals to a number, you're dealing with a horizontal line. And in this case, I have a horizontal line that goes through 3. And I'm going to express this with a solid line because it's less than or equal to. So remember, if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we use a solid line to represent that on our Cartesian plane mm -hmm. on the rectangular coordinate system. All right. Oh, and speaking of which, if you need a refresher on graphing linear inequalities, check out this graph right here. Right, right there. You may find me in it. I, I, may, I may talk to you in the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put arrows on this. And because it's less than, in other words, because all the solutions that are true in this inequality can be found beneath the line because it's less than or equal to three, I'm going to shade beneath my line here. All right. So what have we learned? So we found that this lower right area in my graph is where I have an overlap of my solutions. So it's this area right here where my solution is. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right in here. Okay. And you don't have to make this as messy. In fact, please don't. Don't, don't make yours as messy as mine because this is, I don't know why, I don't know why I won't stop. I don't know why I'm not stopping here. But anyway, this area right here, that area, yeah, that's where the solution is to our example here, where we have the x is greater than zero and y is less than or equal to three. Yep, that was just an example. That wasn't even a true problem. I was just putting that out there. But anyway, let's start with number one. All right, here we have number one. Okay, and in problem number one, we have x plus y is less than or equal to one and x is greater than 1. So what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with obviously two linear inequalities that are in two variables, but with the word and. With the word and, this is an intersection. So I'm looking for an area where the solutions of both inequalities overlap. That's what I need. That's what I need to submit, and that's what I'm going to find. So I'm going to start with my first inequality. I'm going to start with the x plus y is less than or equal to 1. And then I'll go about the business of putting this in slope-intercept form because that's my favorite way to graph. I, I don't, 
I don't know about you guys and your you know X and Y intercepts and your X Y charts. I like the slope intercept form. Okay, it calms me. All right, I, I'd like to have a method that's going to calm me down when I already don't want to do the assignment to begin with. You know, so just just calm me down. So this this method calms me down, and, and that's what I'm going to use. So using the slope intercept form, I know that the slope of this line is negative one, mm -hmm. and we can write it as negative one over one to show the rise of a run for the slope. Mm -hmm. And then my B, aka the y-intercept, is going to be positive 1. And when it comes to graphing a linear equation or inequality using slope-intercept form, we always start with the y-intercept. So I'm going to start at 1 on the y-axis, and I'm going to go down 1 into the right one, and that will give me a point right here as well. With these two points, I'm going to draw a solid line through the points because I have a less than or equal to symbol here. All right. So I have a solid line going through there. I'm going to put arrows on both ends. And your line looks much better than mine because you draw lines better than me. And I need to shade in the appropriate area. Now, in a problem like this, I usually like to use a test point. So usually that test point is going to be the origin, 0, 0. So if I were to substitute in 0 for y and 0 for x, I would end up with 0 being less than or equal to 1. All right, because me plugging in 0 for y is obviously 0, right? And me plugging in 0 for x will obviously give me a 0 there. You can't have negative 0. So 0 plus 1 gives me 1. So the inequality reads is 0 less than or equal to 1. Well, that's a true statement, isn't it? So that means I'm going to shade beneath the line. Yeah, I'm going to shade right there where I can find my origin. See, if this was a false statement, I would have shaded on the other side of the line. That's just... That's just how I would have done it. I'm going to be graphing. Oh, you forgot already, didn't you? Did you forget? We're going to be also graphing x is greater than or equal to 1. Well, that's in the format of a vertical line. So you remember we had talked about that in the previous example? Yeah, you have a vertical line here, and it's going to be a solid line because of the greater than or equal to symbol going through 1. And I'm going to use green this time. So let's go ahead and show this. We have a vertical line going through 1, all right? just like so, and I'll be shading this inequality to the right. Why? Because things that are greater than or equal to 1 can be found on the line x equals 1 and to the right of 1. So I have my shading going on here. And recall, this must be an intersection. And the intersection is an overlap of the solutions of the two inequalities that we grabbed. So you'll find your solutions for this intersection right here. In this area right in here. Okay. There you go. There you go. I just, I don't know why I won't stop. It's because it's too fun. It's too fun to color. And there you go. This is just an excuse for me to color. And I like coloring. Okay. And besides, I need to try to make my graph look better than yours because we already know that you had a head start on having a pretty graph. And it is what it is. Okay. This is my graph. I know you're going to talk about me. I, I'm trying, I'm doing the, I'm doing the best I can here. Okay. I'm doing the best I can. And you're way too critical. Way too critical of me. Anyway, this, this is my graph. Okay? That's my graph for number one. And we're going to move on to problem number two. All right? Thank you. Man, you are bossy. Bossy? You're just a bossy person. Okay? Be nicer to me. I'm nice to you. All right? Let's be friends. In problem number two, we have 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 2. And y is less than 4. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have an intersection. How do I know this? Because of this word right here. The word and tells me that I'm dealing with an intersection. So I'm going to start by putting my first inequality in slope-intercept form because that is my personal preference. Well, it is. All right, I, I like that, that method. So if you'd like to use any other method, you can. Go right ahead and then see if we get the same graph, okay? All right, so in other words, I'll be checking you and, and you check me, all right? But don't check me too hard, okay? Because who's going to check me, boo? <laughs> okay? All right, there you go. I just, I just had to say that. Sorry. So anyway, we have 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 2. So I want to isolate the variable y, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 2x to both sides of the inequality. Mm-hmm. 
My two x's will cancel out. I bring down negative y is greater than or equal to negative two x plus two. I will then divide each and every term by negative one, or you can multiply. You can multiply by negative one, but I prefer to divide. Okay, that's just my preference. Then, because I'm dividing each and every term by a negative one, that means I need to also change the direction of my inequality symbol. So you end up with y is less than or equal to positive 2x minus 2 to give me a slope of 2. And I'll write it as 2 over 1 because I'm graphing it. And my y-intercept, where I will start graphing, will be at negative 2. And we get that value from right here. Okay, so once again, we're using that slope intercept form, that y equals mx plus b format to assist us in the graph of our inequality here. So I have a point right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be going up to 1, 2, and then over 1 to have another point right here. Thank you. And I'll be using a solid line because it's a less than or equal to symbol. All right, so let's go ahead and put, oh, why is that so crooked? I think... I think I could do better. Can I do better? This is a little better. Okay. All right. It's a little better. There you go. There you go. We're going to keep that. We're going to keep that one. I'm going to be okay with that one. All right. And then I'm going to use a test point of the origin, since my line is not going through the origin, to determine where I should shade for my solutions to the inequality. So if I replace y and x with 0, this would read is 0 less than or equal to negative 2. Well, no, zero is not less than or equal to negative two. No, it's not. So that means that I'll be shading on this side of the line. Mm -hmm. I'll be shading on this side of the line because plugging in my test point of zero, zero, I end up with a false statement and I can't have that. All right, I can't have that false statement there. So this is where my solutions will lie. Next, we'll be graphing our inequality. Y is less than four. This one right here. And the format of this line is a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. Okay. So anytime you have the format of y equals to a number, you're always dealing with a horizontal line. And in this line in particular, it says y is less than four. So if y is less than four, we need to use a dashed line in order to represent it on our rectangular coordinate system. So I have at four on the y axis, I have a dashed line going through this. All right, check out my dashed line. Check it out. There it is. There it is. That's that. So since I know the solutions for this linear inequality has y values that are less than 4, so we need to shade under here, okay? We need to shade underneath that line there. And what we're looking for is a place where these solutions overlap. And where is that occurring? Where is that occurring? You got it. Right over here. Right over here, we'll have our solution to our intersection mm -hmm, of these two inequalities. There, it's right there in this area over here. I decided not to make this one as nasty looking as the other one. Hey, you know what? Forget you. I'm going to do it because I want to. I, I, I can't help myself. So over here in this area, yeah, that's where I'm going to have the solution to this intersection. Right in here. I'm just going to make it all nasty and ugly because... That's what you expect of me for some reason. That's okay. That's all right. This is, this is going to be where the solution is. And you're not having as much fun shading in your problem as I am. Okay? So there you go. All right? So without a doubt, I have my answer solved for. Mm -hmm. My teacher is happy. I'm happy. We're all happy. Everybody's happy because this problem is right. Okay? So there you go. That's problem number two. So now let's look at number three. And with number three, we have the following intersection. It's an intersection because it has the word and in it. Just saying. We have 3x minus y is greater than or equal to 3, and y is less than 3. With the first inequality, the linear inequality, I need to solve for y. I need to solve for y. All right, so I'll do that. I'll have 3x minus y is greater than or equal to 3. I'm going to solve for y by subtracting 3x to both sides. I'm just showing my work here. That's, that's all I'm doing. I mean, I would do it anyway without you. I'm going to show my work because that's what I do. And then I'll be dividing each and every term by negative 1. Mm -hmm. Just divide by negative 1. And what happens when we divide an inequality by a negative value? Absolutely. You need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So change it. You'll have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 3 so that you know now. Oh, you know. 
the slope is 3, and I'm going to write that as 3 over 1, so I'll know my rise of my run. And my y-intercept, where I'm going to begin graphing, it's going to be a negative 3. There we go. All right, so we'll start on our Cartesian plane here with negative 3, with negative 3 on the y-axis. So I have a point right here. Mm -hmm. Got it in purple this time. And I'll be going up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 1. And I have another point right there. And then we'll hold hands together and pray that Mr. Wick can draw a straight line this time. Okay? Great. Got that prayer in for me? Good. Let's see how it goes. Well, I see you don't pray that much. But anyway, it's straight enough. Okay? It's straight enough. It's going to be straight for us. We're going to pretend it's straight. Notice that I'm using a solid line here because I have less than or equal to in my inequality. Therefore, the line must be represented by... A solid line because it's including the points that lie on the line in addition to where we're about to shade. Mm -hmm. So if I were to replace using 0, 0, the origin, as a test point, 0 for y and 0 for x, we would end up with an inequality that reads 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. Well, is that a true statement? Is it? No, it is not a true statement. So because it's not true, uh, we're going to shade on the other side of the line. So I'm going to shade over here sparingly because I know I'm looking for an intersection eventually okay next we're going to be graphing the line y is less than three all right y is less than three that's the line we're going to be graphing that's a horizontal line and it's a horizontal line that goes through three and we'll use a dashed line in order to graph it so here we have a dashed line going through three on the y-axis here like so okay and I need to shade beneath the line because it's less than, all right? And this problem feels very familiar to the last one, but practice makes perfect here, okay? So I'll be shading beneath the line, and I need the overlapping areas for my intersection. So that means that my solution lies, okay, let's go ahead and get that all in view here. My solution lies in this area right here. Yeah, it's right in there. See? See how I'm making that pretty for you? See how I'm doing that? See how cute that is? See how much fun I'm having? See how much fun I'm having? You see how much fun? It's fun. This is me having fun. Okay? Because I'm shading. I get to color. I'm coloring. I'm coloring. And there we have it. Right in that area. Thanks, teach. Right there. There's your solution. You like this area, teacher? There you go. You like that? That's where I just shaded for you. This is my art form. This, this is my art that I'm submitting. Okay? I want extra credit for this area here, because it's an abstract. What do you see in this picture, teacher? Okay, anyway, we have problem number four coming up. Problem number four is coming up. All right, finally, what you guys have been waiting for, a different type of problem. This is a union. We have a word or between the two inequalities. So anytime we have the word or, we're looking for a union. A union, we want all of the solutions that we can find in both inequalities and just put them in a the pot going to make a big pot of gumbo. All right, there we go. And that's going to be where our solutions are. So we're going to start with our first inequality. And that inequality is x plus y is less than or equal to 2. And solving for y, I'll be subtracting x to both sides, like so. I'll bring down y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. And I need to find the slope and the y-intercept of this linear inequality in order to graph it. Okay, so that means that I have a slope of negative 1. I'm going to write it as negative 1 over 1. And I have a y-intercept of 2 because of this value right here. Okay, that b value. That's the y-intercept. And I'll start on the y-axis with a point 2 right there on the y-axis. And in addition to that, we'll be using the slope in order to find another point. So because my rise of a run here is written as negative 1 over positive 1, I'm going to go down 1 and then to the right 1, and I'll have a value right there. And let's go ahead and pray for Mr. Witt and his straight line. There you go. Straight enough. And with this line, we need to shade in the appropriate area. Because I have a less than or equal to symbol, uh, generally I'll be shading beneath the line, but I don't, I don't trust it. I'm going to use a test point. If I use the origin as a test point, plugging in 0 for y and 0 for x, this would read 0 is less than or equal to 2. And that is a true statement. So that confirms that I should be shading beneath this line right here. I should. 
That's where I'll find my solutions for that particular inequality. Or I'll have the graph for the y is greater than or equal to 3. Well, I should find that above a horizontal line going through 3 on the y-axis. So here we have a horizontal line going through 3. I use a solid line for this horizontal line because it's greater than or equal to. So we need a shade above the line. And recall that when it's dealing with a union, you're going to end up including everywhere you have the graph shaded. In other words, the only area that will not be shaded is this area right here. As far as our solution is concerned, we want everything else. So, if I was being creative, I guess I would say that I need all of this. Mm -hmm. Give me all of that. I need all of this for my solution. I need, I need all that area up there. I need all of this down here. Give, give me all of this. Everything down here. I need it all. I, I want it all. Thank you. Yeah, I, I need all of this. Give, give that to me. So, my area is everything that's shaded. The only part that should not be shaded is this area here. Well, I don't have a shader right here because it is a union. It's a union. So I include everything. And that's problem number four. That's problem number four. Let's move on. Next up, we have problem number five. And in problem number five, I have x minus two is greater than y or x is less than one. So I'm going to start by looking at this first inequality of x minus two is greater than y and realizing that I can just flip this inequality around. Okay. I'm a little on the lazy side, so I'm going to be taking the easy way out here. I'm just going to put the y first. Then, because my inequality symbol is pointing toward the y, I'm going to make that continue by making that inequality symbol point towards my y on the left here. And then I'll have that x minus 2. So I have rewritten my inequality. To put it in a more familiar form for myself, I like to have the y equals mx plus b format when I'm graphing right. So now I have it that way. So that's how you can do that. You can just flip the entire inequality. From here, I want to find the slope. The slope is a coefficient on my x variable. So that's 1. I'm going to write it as 1 over 1. 1 over 1. I want to play that game tonight. That's all the notes. Just showing my age. We have b. Okay. So with b, we have a y-intercept of negative 2. Yep, that's right. And now I'm going to graph this on the rectangular coordinate system, and you can't stop me. No. Now, you're saying to yourself right now, well, Mr. Witt, I could just press pause and stop you, but I would still be doing it, or would I? Okay, I'm just going to let you ponder over that. So here we have the y-intercept is negative 2. So I'm going to put a point at negative 2 on the y-axis. That's my y-intercept. And in addition to that, I'm going to use the slope. So I'm going up 1 and over 1, so I have an additional point there. And... I'm going to now graph the line, using the dashed line, by the way, because I have a less than symbol. See, look at that. I have a less than symbol. That requires a dashed line. So let's use one. All right, let's put this in view. Put it in view. Put it in view. Put it in view. All right, there you go. So we're going to use a dashed line here. So getting the dashed line, just like that. Arrows on both ends, thank you. And because I have a less than symbol, I need to shade uh, where? Let's see. If I were to plug in the origin, 0 for y, 0 for x, I would say it's 0 less than negative 2. That's false. It's false. That's false. It's a false statement. Thank you. I'll be shading on the other side of the line. So it'll be over here. Sparingly. Okay, until I find out uh, my final solution. And then I'm going to be graphing the vertical line, x is less than 1. So x equals 1 is a vertical line, and because it's a less than symbol there, I'll be using a dashed line to represent that vertical line. So at 1, I have a dashed line going through 1, arrows on both ends. And recall, it's less than, so we shade to the left this time. All right, so shading to the left. Shading to the left. That's what I'm doing there. All right, you don't see everything? There it is. Oh, you don't have everything in view? Here you go. So um, we're done. We're done. We are done. See, everywhere it's shaded is the solution. That is where the union is. The union lies wherever I have it shaded. Let's go ahead and just, just go crazy. Okay? There you go. So I'm going to confide something with you. When I said let's go crazy, I, I actually considered singing um, Prince's Let's Go Crazy song from Purple Rain, but I'm not going to do you like that because I care about you. And I would hate for you to 
to have your ears start bleeding onto your device. Okay, there you go. That's the union. That's the union right there. I hope these problems get harder because it didn't seem like they were so repetitive when I was setting this up, but it's good practice, okay? It's good practice. Hopefully the next one will be harder though. Okay, number six looks great. We have three X plus two Y is less than six or X minus two Y is greater than or equal to four. So this is a union because I have an or situation, all right? So if you see the word or, it's a union and it's an intersection. So with this union, I'm gonna start with the first inequality and I'm gonna solve for Y. I wanna put it in slope intercept form. That helps me, Mr. Witt, graph it easier. So I'll take my 3x plus 2y, which is less than 6, and subtract 3x to both sides. From here, I have 2y is less than negative 3x plus 6, and then I'll be dividing each and every term by 2. Okay? So this gives me y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 3. This tells me that I have a slope uh -huh, of negative 3 halves, and also have a y-intercept of 3. So I'll start at 3 on the y-axis, and then I will go down 3 because of the slope, 1, 2, 3, and then over to the right, 2, and I'll have a point here. And because this is a less than symbol, I need to use a dashed line. So I have a dashed line right here. Okay, we're going to pretend that's straight. And I need to shade. Yeah, I need to shade. Here you go. There you go. Let me get that in view for you. So substituting y and x with 0, this would read is 0 less than 3. And that is a true statement. So I need to shade on this side of the line. All right, there we go. Now preparing our second inequality, that x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 4, I'm going to solve for y in this inequality. So I'm going to take that over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just write all over our lovely logo here. There we go. And I'm going to subtract from both sides. This is negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 4. And then I'll be dividing each and every term by negative 2. Doing so will change the direction of the inequality symbol to make it read y is less than or equal to positive 1 half x minus 2. So this is what I end up with here. That tells me that I have a slope of 1 half and I also have a y-intercept of negative 2. All right, so this is the information that I'll be using to graph the second inequality. So that means I start at negative 2 on the y-axis. I will then go up 1 and then over to the right 2. So I have a point right here. And I need to draw a solid line through this. All right, there we go. And it's going to be solid because of the less than or equal to symbol. And then I need to shade. So as I substitute in 0 for y, let me go ahead and screw that down a little bit so you can see. So as I substitute 0 for y and 0 for x, because once again, I'm using the origin as a test point. And keep in mind, the only time you can use the origin as a test point is when the line does not go through the origin. And all the lines, fortunately, in this video, the line never went directly through the origin. So in a situation like that, just pick another the point on the axis and it will be fine. Either axis will do. So here, I'm going to use the origin. If I plug in 0 for y, 0 for x, it would read is 0 less than or equal to negative 2. Well, that's a false statement, right? So that means I need to shade down here, right down here, beneath the line. All right? And because I have a union, that tells us that everywhere that's shaded, that's everywhere over here is a solution to this problem. All right, so the only area that's not a solution is up here, okay? That area right there. That's the only area where we cannot find solutions. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this video from Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate as that helps me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring bring you more free math tutorials on our YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. Thanks for watching. We feel great knowing that you got some help and you're safe and sound. 
Now, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Ben Tutoring, and like us on Facebook. We'd be much obliged.